20 of Colorado's counties are going to level red restrictions this weekend as COVID-19 keeps spreading in the state. New state modeling finds one in 49 Coloradans currently have the virus. And there are fears outbreaks will only grow if people gather for Thanksgiving. Researchers at the University of Colorado say there's a strategy that could help get this pandemic under control. That's cheap, rapid and widespread testing that gives results faster. This week, the FDA gave the OK to the first at home rapid test. Nine News reporter Jennifer Meckles shows us what CU researchers found and how effective this test really is. Encouraging news from the FDA this week, emergency use authorization for a nasal swab COVID test you can give yourself at home and results in about 30 minutes. And I think the rapid testing and point of care testing is again going to pave the way out of this pandemic. Nine health expert Dr. Pyle Coley said the test has laboratory level performance. The test itself is quite good. So if you have 100 people who have COVID-19, the test is going to pick up 94 of them. And if you have 100 people who don't have COVID-19, the test is going to, you know, accurately diagnose those people as negative. And tests like these could help finally eliminate the virus. What we really wanted to understand was a trade-off between how often are you getting tested, what's the sensitivity of that test, and how quickly do you get the results? Test sensitivity, meaning how high the viral load has to be for a test to spot a positive COVID case. CU researchers teamed up with Harvard to figure out what is the best strategy for catching infections and stopping transmission. Those so-called gold standard tests that do take longer to get and delayed results or testing more often with quick results, but a less sensitive test. If you want to catch somebody early on in that infection, the frequency of, of testing is going to be a lot more important and the turnaround time to get somebody results when they can still act on them. Testing is definitely going to help us break that chain of transmission. But not the only solution. Dr. Coley says tests are information, not a free pass to dismiss other precautions. So the way I think about testing is that if it's positive, you've identified somebody who can then be quarantined or isolated and they won't spread it to somebody else. But if it's negative, we still have to keep doing all the things that we're doing in order to keep this virus at bay. Jennifer Meckles, Nine News. Reality check on this new rapid at home test. You can you can't get one yet. NBC reports most kits roll out in the spring. This test requires a prescription costs about 50 bucks. Community testing sites around Denver are swamped. They have been for a while now, but the city is standing by its decision to close the largest testing site at Pepsi Center turned ball arena. Denver's health director says the Pepsi Center site wasn't helpful to some of the most vulnerable communities and says its new sites are focused on filling that gap. The state's COVID response team sent out a flurry of late emails tonight announcing new testing sites, nursing home visitation guidelines, and an effort to address short staffed facilities. New free community testing sites will open in Douglas and Jefferson counties this weekend. The Lone Tree site will be at Canvas Credit Union off Park Meadows. It opens tomorrow and will be open from 8 until 4 daily. A second site at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in Golden opens Sunday. Hours at that site vary. Pre-registration for tests is encouraged but not required. The state is also launching two mobile testing vans. One will cover Northeast Colorado. The other will be in Jefferson, Douglas, Clear Creek and Park counties. We'll post all that information on 9news.com. You can also text the word test to 303-871-1491. We'll send you the links. The state will still allow indoor visitations at nursing homes, but there are some enhanced precautions you should know about. The average two week positivity rate for tests has to be below 10% at facilities. They must implement weekly surveillance testing for all staff and residents. There can't be an active outbreak and homes must have enough staff and PPE on site. The state has also activated what it's calling the Staffing Shortage Fusion Center. Nursing homes, prisons, homeless shelters, long-term care facilities, and hospitals can request short-term help if they are short-staffed. The latest state data shows one-third of all hospitals expect staff shortages within the next week. Hospitals, wor hospital workers are slammed now more than at any time in this pandemic. 1,564 patients have confirmed cases of COVID in Colorado's hospitals. UC Health in Greeley says the hospital is extremely full and has been that way for two weeks. The hospital says it opened three new ICU rooms last week and filled them almost immediately. Mesa County on the Western Slope announced yesterday it had no more ICU beds available. 
The state added 5100 cases of COVID yesterday. We're averaging more than 4600 new cases each day over the past week. Those numbers appear like they, they could be plateauing, but at a very high number. Positivity may also be leveling off, but the virus is still very active and spreading easily in Colorado. 11.8% of tests came back positive. That's lower than our weekly average, which is at 12.5%. 15 Colorado counties are now under level red restrictions as COVID-19 continues to surge here. Five more will join on Sunday, and now Larimer County joins next Tuesday after the state moved it from level yellow straight to red, skipping orange. Level red is not a stay at home order. It is confusing because it used to be until just earlier this week when Democratic Governor Jared Polis introduced level purple as the new worst case scenario. So red means no indoor dining at restaurants, bars are closed and gyms, businesses and personal services have strict capacity limits. Even with hospital space running low in Weld County, Republican County Commission and Weld County Sheriff say that they'll ignore its level red status from the state. They said they won't enforce it. Restaurants and gyms will be greatly impacted in counties that are now in level red, but so are other businesses like swim schools. Reporter Liz Kodalik explains. Goldfish Swim School in Central Park has always seen its business as essential. We are providing a life-saving skill that helps families. In a way, owner Amy Turner says, that looks much different since they reopened in July. Partitions and social distancing between swimmers as they learn the basics of water safety, face shields for their instructors, and then there's the air filtration system that's been there for a while. All that chlorinated water, too, that the CDC says inactivates COVID-19. I think they don't know how to classify us. I would say um, we're either educational services or personal services. The state and the county see it differently, though. The amended public health order says gyms, rec centers, and indoor pools, no matter their purpose, have to operate at 10% capacity or 10 people, whichever's fewer. We reached out to the county to see if there's an option for businesses to appeal. They got back to us saying they can't under level red orders. The state says they've worked carefully to consider these classifications, which means Goldfish Swim School will have to reduce capacity and try to stay afloat for the next 30 days. We just hope we can weather the storm. It's not realistic to have a small business and um, sustain a reduced capacity. In Denver, Liz Kodalik, 9 News.